let's take a few minutes and talk about the parts of the accordion. On the right hand, we have the keyboard, which is the same thing as a piano keyboard. And you have your two black notes, your three black notes, two and three, and so on. You also have tonal switches on the right hand grill, which I'll come back to in a minute and explain what that's about. On the left hand, the bass section of the accordion, you'll find six rows. This row, this row, and so on. This outer row here is called the counter bass row. The next row in is called the fundamental bass row. Between the two, you can do a variety of things. One is play a scale. The next row is called the major chord. The next one is called the minor chord. The next one is the seventh and then diminished. And inside this part of the accordion, there are mechanisms in there that when you press one button, such as the major chord, inside there are mechanisms that lift up three pads. And when they lift up those three pads, they create what we call a chord. And that's why it's called the major chord. And when you go to the minor, it'll change one of the notes in that chord to create that. And the seventh, they'll change a little bit more and so on. Moving over to the left hand bass strap, you'll find that the hand will go through that and rest between that and the bass plate of the accordion. At the top you have a wheel that loosens and tightens the accordion strap. As how tight it should be is an individual preference, but my recommendation would be that if you open your hand like this and pull the way, there should be about a half inch space between your palm and the base plate and then that should allow enough room for movement up and down. The center of the accordion consists of bellows. And these are held together with these bellow snaps when you're not using the accordion. And they're located at the top and the bottom of the instrument. Going to the right hand of the accordion, if you look on the grill, you'll see you probably have some tonal switches there. You might have two switches, three switches, seven switches, up to 14 switches. What they do is change the tone of the right hand on the accordion. If you have only, let's say, two switches, which would be what we call an entry-level accordion, you would have what is known as a middle reed and a low reed. A middle reed would be called a clarinet reed, and it sounds like this. If you have a low reed, it's a bassoon reed, and it sounds like this. And what they are is an octave apart. You might have a third switch, which will play both together. Now moving up the ladder of accordions, you could go to an accordion with three sets of reeds on the right hand. The third set would be called a piccolo. So you'd have a low, a middle, and a high reed, otherwise known as bassoon, clarinet, and piccolo. This accordion has four reeds, so I have the option, that's why I have so many choices here, because I have different combination of those reeds. And the names of those reeds are low, middle, middle, and high, or bassoon, clarinet, oboe, and piccolo. You'll notice too that on the side there's a switch, it's called a master switch, and it goes in like that, and when that is pressed it engages all the reeds, so that when I play that note, all the reeds play. <laughs> And what that allows is it gives you the full accordion sound. So let's move on. Remember throughout this video that our goals are simple. That song, hopefully, will be played within probably the next 30 minutes. Uh, the first thing I want to start out with here is how to hold the instrument, which relates to the shoulder straps, which I feel are probably the most important part of the instrument. Uh, you'll find on a new pair of shoulder straps, or maybe the ones that you have on your accordion now, one is shorter than the other. The, uh, the left strap here is going to be shorter than the right strap. And the reason for that is because the right strap has to come across this way where the left strap is going to be more straight down. 
And the purpose of this is so that when you look down at the keyboard, you can see that keyboard. What happens with a lot of people that i found over the years is they, want it, they think it has to be centered like this, and then they end up playing looking like this. And that doesn't work. What you want to do is situate the accordion so that when you look down, the, the keyboard is right there in front of you. And it'll make it a lot more pleasant to play. Another thing, it's okay to stand playing when you first learn it. It's okay to sit down. The one thing you want to remember when you're sitting is that the keyboard should come here at the point of the leg and the left leg supports the bellows like this. And once you have that situated, you're ready to start. Which brings us to the next step, which is the bellow control. What I found with a lot of students over the years too is some of them think when they pull out the bellows, they wanna pull them straight out with the left arm, literally holding the left side of the accordion in the air, and that is wrong. What you wanna do is relax the arm, let it fall straight to the floor and out so that when you're playing, the motion follows out towards the floor like this. And the bellows will contour to that. All you have to do is stay relaxed, and it will work. Another thing I oftentimes try to explain to people is that the left elbow is basically the whole instrument. It's how you control those bellows that create the different styles, whether it's Tex-Mex or Cajun or classical or you know, Cleveland-style polkas. The left elbow controls it all. And uh, what you want to do is, as you're playing, stay relaxed. Your left elbow is going to do the work, but you want to keep the hand relaxed on both, actually both hands. So keep that in mind. Another thing now that we want to get into is hand position. And we're going to start with the right hand now. If you have any reading experience, you'll find that middle C in music where it's written is here on the accordion, the first C on the keyboard. A lot of people think it's the middle C, but it's not. What you want to do is position yourself on the first C. And if you have a, a 41 note keyboard, it's the fifth white note up, that would be C. And what you want to do is put the thumb there and line your fingers up through each note. You go one, two, three, four, and five. And then what you want to do is sit and practice that over and over. You don't want to know how many times I've played this, but it goes like this. And you'll play that over and over until you get it closer to this. And so on. Once you get used to that, It'll make it a lot easier for you when you start playing the song. Also, remember, as you're doing this, keep the left arm going towards the floor, not straight out, and stay relaxed. Uh, one thing, too, as you're playing this scale, you can use the wrist. Try not to use the arm, but you can kind of tap at the note like this. If you'll notice, I'm using the wrist, not the whole arm. And later on, that'll benefit you a lot, which we'll go into in an inter intermediate level tape. So, uh, but for now, just remember that you can practice it both ways, smooth and connected, and then short and detached. Using the wrist. And that will take care of the right hand for now. Let's go over to the left hand. In the left hand, the two fingers that you'll be using are three and two, the middle finger and the index finger. And they're gonna look similar to this, in this fashion. Now I'm gonna go into the bass section and try to explain this to you, and it's not really that tough. Uh, they have a big fancy term in mu music called the circle of fifths, and the left hand in the bass section of the accordion is done and put together that way. All as it means is that it makes it very easy to play. And you'll notice that C, the, which is the button with the indentation or the rhinestone in it. That is called the C bass. And what you want to do is get used to playing that. And the finger that you use to do that is the middle finger, the third finger. And what I want you to do is to play that bass over and over and over like this. Keeping the note sharp and detached. And it should sound like this. And what you want to do 
is just kind of tap. I have to know you want to play it, so don't tap too lightly. But you want to pull, stay relaxed, let the arm angle towards the floor, and just keep playing it short. And just remember to stay relaxed as you're doing this. And then take the bellows and go back in the same way that they came, went out. And all the while you're doing this, remember to keep the notes short and relaxed. Okay, and that brings us up to the second finger. What does it do? Well, it plays the major chord. And in your books, you'll see that as a capital C and a capital M. And the capital M, of course, stands for major. That is right here. And what you want to do is you want to take the second finger and play that the same way. Keep it short and relaxed. Let the arm angle towards the floor. And then go back in. After you feel comfortable with that, and the arm's moving, the bellows are moving fine, and, and it's even, then what you want to do is start learning a bass pattern. The first bass pattern that we all learn is 3-4 time. It's a waltz tempo. And what it is is bass chord chords. What you want to do is play one bass and then two chords. After you practice this over and over, real slow, and everybody's different for how long they have to play this, you want to become comfortable with it until you get it like this. After you learn that, then you're well on your way now to putting both hands together, which will be in lesson two.